so we're outside um, the office over there, the University of Nottingham. And, um, just about to get in the car to drive off to the airport again. Um, unlike last time, we're not going to see the snow. So this time we're off to somewhere a little bit warmer. So I'm Pete Lysons and I'm an academic, I'm a chemist at the University of Nottingham. So we're in Addis Ababa University in the science faculty out at Kilo and it's like 23 degrees, it's nice and pleasant and um, I'm going to go and see some of the students. Um, I'm here for, for two reasons, firstly because I'm an adjunct professor at this university and I give lectures on sustainability and green chemistry. Salam. <laughs> and secondly, we've got ongoing research projects with the university and the faculty and really that's why I'm here now, to talk about progress and to see where we're going next. This, this is the Natural History Museum at Addis yeah. Ababa on the science faculty. We're going to go and see some of the, the endemic animals. And yeah, this is the endemic one, you know? This is the wild ibex. This one comes from in the northern part of Ethiopia and Simeon National Park. This is the medium size. Mm -hmm. This is the medium size. It's quite heavy. Zigabatel cheetah, a bushman, you know, silver anerno. Talayumitel pataru de wo, the burkabuka. You can see the similarities in the lab. You can see the benches, hard wearing benches, just like home. Rotary evaporators for removal of solvent. Solvent bottles, extraction columns. So essentially, chemistry is the same all over the world. The facilities are very, very similar. The key difference between the facilities in the lab in Addis, though, and the lab back home in Nottingham, is that in Addis you're allowed to listen to the radio. Back home, we don't allow the radio in the lab because of safety issues, and in Addis it's a little bit more relaxed and we can listen to the radio and enjoy ourselves while we're working. So one of the biggest obstacles is actually accessing information on the internet, like email or literature. Downloading a paper at home can take maybe five seconds. It can take 25 minutes here. If the, if the server doesn't crash, it's taken me about four minutes just to bring up a, a two-line email. So it's <laughs> it can be frustrating at times. One of the first rules that I have with collaborating is that I've got to be able to get on with the people that I'm working with. And we had a chance meeting with some people from Addis Ababa University and we really got on very well and we decided that we wanted to do something together to further green chemistry and sustainability across Sub-Saharan Africa. So really Addis was the starting point because we had a contact and because we knew that there was an existing high quality education system. The first lecture that I thought I'd give today is a, a lecture which I've called Sustainability for the Future. And the reason why I showed you the planet Earth like this is to try and build up a concept in your mind that the planet is on its own in space. He's always been there for us and, and I really appreciate what he's doing. So uh, he's a, a great asset for this collaboration. He is outgoing, positive and uh, always, I mean, he's, he, he can interact with anybody, I mean, he can talk. He's like Ethiopians, I mean, he has that character, and um, everybody likes Peter. So, thank you very much. It's tiring giving lectures here because of the altitude, and um, you, you also get a dry throat very, very quickly. But it's good to see smiling faces when you're giving a lecture as well. So I think the kids enjoyed it. So, so we don't want to use nasty, horrible, damaging, toxic materials. We want to use materials which are more benign, don't cause pollution, and don't cause problems perhaps with human beings and animals. Did you get footage of how um, the, the Ethiopian television works? The, the interviews are big difference to BBC interviews. Big difference. So we've left campus now at Arat Kilo in Addis which is where the science faculty is based. And we have a large project on green chemistry and sustainability in sub-Saharan Africa, partic particularly in Ethiopia. So we're gonna go for a, for a bit of a drive around the city now and perhaps to a couple of viewpoints. 
where we can see some of the growing problems of, of air pollution and perhaps water pollution where our activities in green chemistry and sustainability are actually going to try and make an effort to, to change the way that this pollution is, is increasing. And we're going to go to a viewpoint above the city called Entoto. This is very, very high, about 3,400 meters. And from there, we'll be able to see that the magnitude of the aerial pollution sitting across the whole of Addis Ababa. And a lot of this is, is from cars, buses, that are running on older technologies and older engines, so they're very, very polluting. And often you see very large clouds of black smoke from the buses and lorries. But also, some of the aerial pollution is as a result of cooking methods, which is still predominantly on charcoal. So there is a lot of wood smoke in the atmosphere, particularly in the mornings and in the evenings. So we see evidence here of soil erosion, because the trees have been harvested for firewood and have been removed for building activities. But when the trees are taken away, the roots lose their um, efficiency in maintaining soil structure. So the soils, the, the, the fertile topsoils, are washed away by the, by the regular rains in the wet season. So the, the fertility and, and the viability of the land is being reduced through lack of management. So um, we've left the vehicle and we're just going to go and see if we can find somewhere where we can see the city down through the woods. So many people don't really appreciate that, that smoke isn't simply just a gas. It's actually lots of very small particles of, of burnt wood and carbon and horrible things like that. So not only does it look bad, but when you breathe it in, it gets stuck in your lungs. It causes all sorts of health problems. Not really good for you at all. The donkeys are carrying the wood back down to the markets in the city so that they can be turned into charcoal or burnt on the fires in the houses. <laughs> This is the Akagi River. It's about 20 kilometers from the city center. And um, we're right in the middle of a rapidly developing industrial zone in Akagi and further down in Dukum. So what we see here is, is the river, which is suffering from the outflow of lots of the industrial development. So you can see along, along the lines of the banks, a lot of sludge and the color and the, 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 the appearance of the river it's very, very dark. It's very heavily laden with industrial products, very many metals, chromium from the tanning industries, a whole range of different materials, cadmium from batteries. Where do you see the future of the collaboration? Is it going to, you know... When, it will, when it's going to be, it, it will flourish, I have no doubt about that. So we will involve more staff and more students. Uh, so I'm sure we have a long way to go together. We have achieved, we have come a long way, and uh, we don't want to stop uh, uh, at this time because there is a lot of work to do. And you see the uh, growth in, in, in the working relationship between the two universities is, is spreading now, beyond uh, green chemistry even. Uh, Tibbs, on the bone, fantastic. I'm absolutely washed out.